All right, traders, I am back with another video. And in this video today, we want to look at the Heikinashi candles again. Yesterday, we put out a video um, teaching you and showing you how to trade the Heikinashi candles. Today, I'm pretty much just going pretty much over some of that same info, but also updating the trade setups that we did. We're not going to look at the whole market using Heikinashi. We're just going to look at uh, the five or six trade setups that we were discussing and see where they are today and if there's a possibility of getting into those trades today. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the session. Hopefully you learned something from it and I'll be right there with you. All right, members and non-members, I sent this out to everyone, even if you were a member or not a member, I wanted you to come to this session today. So I want to welcome you here today. Um, we're going to be talking about, yesterday we had a, a Heikinashi uh, webinar session and we talked about how to trade Heikinashi and so forth. But then at the end of the session, we talked about some trade opportunities. There were probably like five setups. All right, so today what I plan to do is just go over those setups. If you have any questions, I'll ask, I'll answer those questions. I'm not going to be too long. Just really wanted to get you guys up to date on what we have happening. Um, some people here are not members. I just sent this out to everyone and it doesn't matter who's here today. So I appreciate you if you are a member and I still appreciate you if you're not a member. All right. It seems like when we start a webinar session, everyone in the chat room gets very busy. Start clicking, clicking. I can hear you boop the boop. So that's what we're hearing. Come on in here and join us and stop chatting. Come in the session and join us. But anyway, guys, so here we are. We're looking at this um, Swiss franc yen. Yesterday we talked about this. Um, when we held our session, this candle was what we had. All right. We didn't have this candle yet. And this was our level that we're talking about the market doing something. All right. Because this is a relevant level, as you could see when I go back in history. All right, so this level being relevant, you could see, especially the last couple of times it hit. Now, eventually it's going to break, and it could be this time when, that we're getting ready to try to take it, all right? But um, let's look here. What I like to do is see this. So first of all, we talked about these Heikinashi candles. Let's go over the review real quickly. When you're trading the Heikinashi candlesticks, there's only a couple of things you really need to be focused on, all right? So you need to be focused on the color, the size, and the wicks, all right? And then when you're looking to get into a trade, you only need to be focused on really two types of Heikinashi candles, all right? So I'm going to tell you that real quick. First of all, you want to be aware of the, the color of the candle because that's going to let you know, first of all, if it's a bullish candle or a bearish candle, basically green, bullish, red, bearish. You could probably have whatever colors you want, purple, orange, green, yellow, red, whatever. It doesn't really matter, but as long as you know which one is going to be your bullish candle, okay? Um, sorry, guys. And then the, the main thing, the other thing that you want to really know is these wicks, all right? So let's talk about the size first, the size of the body first. The bigger the candle, the more momentum and the stronger the move is, okay? So you could see as these candles got higher, it got stronger, but... It never even showed us a sign of weakness. And then all of a sudden we had indecision. So you see what could really happen is like all of a sudden in the market. So even the signs that we talk about and look for aren't always there. So, but it did show you that you were bullish. You pretty much think you could stay in the trade here, but then we had this drop all of a sudden. All right. So that one was really, really risky or tricky rather, because I would have, I would have expected the market to continue moving higher here just based off of what we see with the candles because these are average candles every candle is going to open in the middle of the previous candle all right so that's going to be the thing then the other thing you want to be aware of, be um, aware of if you're bullish you have these green candles 
you want to see green. I mean, you want to see wicks to the upside, not wicks on the downside, like these little wicks here on the bottom. The if there's no wicks on the bottom, that indicates that it's a strong moving market to the upside. Now, when you look at your signals, how to trade them. So also let me talk about the bear side real quick. Same thing, size and color. All right, size of the candle. But then when you're moving to the downside, you want to see um wicks on the bottom, no wicks on the top. All right. So if you're moving up, you want to see wicks on the top. If you're moving down, you want to see wicks on the bottom. When you start to see wicks on the top of a bearish candle, that's starting to show you signs of weakness. The trend's getting weak. Again, we would have thought it wasn't too weak, but the size of the candle also and the size of the wick let us know that it was starting to get weak. Even though it showed strength, the candle size was not that big. And then you had indecision and then the market went higher. All right. So then the other candle that you're going to be concerned with is this indecision candle. All right. That's all you're going to be really concerned with, because when you get into a trade, you're going to either get in on a candle that's strong like this. So the strong candle, the strong entry is going to be a strong bullish would be a candle like this big body or I mean, a big body with no wick. I mean, with a wick to the top and no wicks on the bottom. That's a strong buy. If you have a candle with wicks up to the top, but a wick at the bottom, that's a weak buy. And as long as this wick on the bottom isn't the same size as the wick on the top or close to it, then it's not going to be considered ind an indecision candle. If the body's not that big and you have a, a candle where the wicks are both pretty much relative, then it's an indecision candle. So you're only going to be looking at indecision candles or entry candles. So basically, these are all entry candles, but you're not going to just enter anywhere on the chart. We have ways to enter the market. And then the next thing you're only going to worry about is the indecision candle to stop the move up and then the move down to get in the market. You're going to look at either a strong ca candle or a uh, a weak candle, a weak buy, I mean, a weak sell or a strong sell candle. All right. So that's all you really need to look at. You don't need to look at dark cloud cover and all this other stuff that we talk about and know those candles, three inside out, three upside down, blah, blah, blah. You don't need to know all that. You just need to know those little things that I just told you to keep it simple and keep it right. We want all of our trading to be simple. So when we looked at this, I told you guys, I'm looking for an uh, opportunity to short this market here. And based off of the, the support and resistance level that we had here, I'm still thinking we're going to get a good opportunity. We want to get it as best as possible. Now, the market could give us an opportunity and take us back out, get up here and then drop again. This is where you lose your confidence. We talked about that in the session yesterday. You're going to have to take some losses, but using these as stop losses to enter. Also, we're going to help you pretty much. So what we do now, I don't really think about these as rejections. Yes, they're rejections. But you can't really tell if it's a rejection if the body's too big. So this body's not that big. You're not going to say this is a rejection candle. That's a rejection. That's a reject. That's not. It's that's what you need. These mid. The thing is that where the uh, next candle opens. So don't really start thinking about these as rejection candles. Just look for the indecision candle to come up next. All right. So now we're going to go to the four hour time frame because we hit our level. We want to get into the trade now. So, you know, with these Heikinashi candles, since they're average candles, they're not giving you the exact true price. Now, sometimes it's going to be very close. You may be a couple pips off. Like now it's probably very close. All right. You may be a few pips off. Like, let's see where this is exactly. This is right here. And the actual market is right uh, right here see it's that is a big difference actually so the actual market is here let me go back to the candle did i mark that thing right yes i know i did and the actual market so the actual market is here see that's that's a big one there that's a big difference that's a difference of just about i don't like to do math so i just do this that's almost 23 pip difference right there, guys. And what we're looking for is the market to drop. Now, let me tell you another thing. Don't worry that you're not in the trade when it happens. Because you got to go to your lower time frame. But let's look at 
at the um let me go back to those candles real quick now most people would have been in on this candle bearish and golfing all right don't worry let me show you something so we look at this and i did look at this and i knew i was a little late but i'm thinking we still get opportunity you would have got in the market right here you're going to get in this market before this is where you would have got in the market you could have got in mm, the wick is kind of big and the body's not that big this is definitely an entry right here right there all right and this is a strong entry down here but the thing about it so let's see this this is where this strong entry is i'm going to show you something now this is where we could have got a good entry we're late with this one and i told you about this one yesterday now we need to break these fractals to continue to the downside i think and we also had divergence on this but look at this real quick so wanna, let me go to the daily so the Heikenashi candle got us an entry right here right if you were on time but the regular candle isn't giving us an entry yet until here now the latest the the longest the worst Heikenashi entry was this one let me show you back on the four hour see we have to go to the four hour was this level right here, right? About 114.037. But when you go to the regular candle, and I'm gonna go on a daily, we're not done yet. So like on a daily, you could still enter this trade, okay? On a Heikenashi, you would have got in here on the four hour and here for sure. And when we even look at it even more, um, Let's go back to the Heikenashi candlestick. Let's go to the four hour. See, we should have switched over to the four hour a long time ago. And I think we were already talking about this. It was, I don't remember where we were, somewhere in here. And then we didn't have this yet. But if you didn't take that, you definitely should have got that. And you would have been in some profit already. Now, to me, these zones are tricky and I'm, I always worry about them. So I want to have my stop loss up here first. Doesn't mean I'm going to let the market come all the way back there on me because these average candles help you to stay pretty safe. So I always like to talk about a two candle rule. Like when I, I'll start out big, but when I get the market moving, I'll stay a candle, like two candles behind, really one candle, because this is the one candle, then the second candle. So I'm staying two candles behind the market. All right. And then the average, the average like if I use this one candle, these two candles bodies, then I would say the average of the market is going to open right in the middle of this. So the average market would be there. A spike shouldn't take me out. Sorry, guys. So that average level. So let me see exactly where average is here average so 15 let's go 17 we'll just say 17. so about the market would be right there that's where the average of the market would be so you know that your two candles behind the average would be here anything outside of the average might bring it up a little bit okay so you're pretty safe still now as far as this trade the only way that i'm thinking about entering this trade is not with Heikenashi because the entry is already there but still when you look at the regular candlesticks because i'm going to talk about that and i wouldn't have gotten in on the four hour here because I probably don't like see this on this four hour here. This would have been tougher for me to ensure how I want to get into the market. I didn't have the, a good setup where I'm looking at the market and I say, oh, that's a real good setup. That's the ideal setup. Well, the thing is, you don't get that with Heikenashi. You get the setup. OK, you're going to see it like here. You may have trouble seeing what 
entry to take based off of the candlestick formations that we talk about, talk about getting into the market. But with the Heikinashi candle, you only have a couple options. You don't have to worry about anything. You're either going to get in on a candle like this or like that. And there's only one difference. This is a bearish candle with a wick on the top and bottom. This is a bearish candle with no wick on top. This is a strong entry. This is a weak entry. So this is a strong sell, weak sell, indecision, basically. I'll call this one indecision because they're too close. So that's the only three candles you have to worry about in this whole structure of these candles. Um, you know, these are going to be the same thing as this candle. This is the same thing as this candle. No doji. This is an indecision candle. This is an indecision candle. Indecision, 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 indecision. All that time. What's this telling you? Don't trade. Don't trade. Don't trade. Then you get a decision. Then you get a decision. Then you get a decision. See, that's how easy this is for you to understand. Now, I'm not saying it's easy to to get into a trade. It is easier to get into a trade, but you want to still trade your levels. All right. And it's going to take a lot of the the psychological aspect of trading out of the market for you where you're not going to say, well, I see this, but I also see this and I see this. It's either yes or no. Yes or no. The only thing that will stop you are you afraid. If you're afraid, that'll stop you. And that's it. Other than that, this is clear, cut, dry, what you need to do. OK, so then with this with this um, Swiss franc yen, four hour time frame, we kind of miss. Let's go to the daily regular candles so we could talk about that. Because see, even on the um, regular on the um, Heikinashi candles, we're not ready for a trade yet on the daily. So you by the time you do get a trade with these candles staying on the daily, the market could be a little bit deep. All right, now let's go. Let's go to the regular candles. Um, let's see where that ends up as. This could be a bigger candle by the end of the day, but if it ends up lower than this candle, then you got a bearish and golfing entry there. You're gonna have a stop loss. I put it above, definitely above this level, but we have a zone here, so I pretty much try to stay above the zone because what the market likes to do a lot of times is break this level, then come back up, test higher, and then drop lower. And so let's look at one other thing. And we're getting ready to have a close below Williams percent R, R negative 20. And I believe I'm on 14. Should be on 14. Yep. Close below negative 20, 14. Uh, Williams percent R. Good sign. Good move. Even if we go back to the Heikinashi candle, you can see this didn't close below yet. So you have time for a good trade here still. But I believe you want to probably maintain with the daily time frame. All right. Any questions on that? You're trying to figure out how to change your candles to I can actually which um, what platform you're using, because I probably don't know all of them. Flat bottoms, flat tops. Do you wait for buy or sell candle on the daily and then go to the. No, don't wait for that buy sell candle on the daily. All right. Because if you wait for that buy sell candle on the daily you're too late on the four hour for sure. Right. Because see, if I'm still waiting here on the daily already on the four hours, giving me entries already. All you want to see is basically when price gets close enough to here, you could probably switch over to four hour. But once we hit the level like right here, so I'm going to put a mark there, then we could switch over and start looking for our short. Now I'm going four hour. We talked about this yesterday. See, so we didn't have anything yet. Then we got an entry there. We and this was the one where I talked about it messing up your psychology because you did get an entry here. You didn't make much profit here. The market goes higher and it does take you out. Remember, we talked about this. You would have got stopped out probably more than likely right here. Unless you had you can't your stop loss at the beginning up here. This is where I'm always starting. Doesn't mean I'm going to let it go all the way up there. And once it got up here, I probably would have said, well, I might as well now. But you have to be prepared that if you're going to put a stop loss at a level, you better make sure it's within your money market, your money management rules, your two to three percent max. OK, so you can't just put a stop loss two to three percent. Don't put a stop loss. What I'm trying to say to you is this. Don't enter the market here and say, well, my two, two to three percent stop loss would be right here. That makes no sense at all whatsoever. 
because you need to be higher than the the high because the market already came to this point. And a lot of times you guys see it. Look what the market does. Just even mark this candle right here. The market likes to come back close to test that level. We have this candle here. It broke a little bit, but see, you need to be above these levels. So you wouldn't have known to be above this level and you would have got stopped out. That's why I'm saying you cannot just say, oh, I'm going to put a 25 pip stop loss because that's what I can afford because it's two to 3% of my account. Yeah, it's two to 3% of your account when you enter here, but you don't have a good stop loss because you need to be technical with your stop loss. So then that means now it's more than two to 3%. So then what do you have to do? You have to cut some of your lots. All right, cut some of your lots. So don't wait for the daily candle to show you because by then this thing is gone. That's why we're going to the four hour time frame. Other than that, we could just stay on the daily time frame and trade what we see. And you could still do that too, but these things get you in late, out late. There's good things about getting in and out late, but that's why we go to the four hour time frame to get in uh, closer to where the market truly is. All right. So the bigger the time frame, the farther away from the market we'll probably be on a big move. So daily is going to be a little bit more than four and then hourly. I don't go down to the hourly with these because you're going to see too many um, trend changes within the trend with because you'll be seeing the correction and the trend and correction. And then sometimes you'll see scattery gibberish. All right. So I like to just stay on the four. It's not too far away from the daily and that signal is relevant. So on the one hour, I'm going to get a couple of signals that tell me to short which one is going to be the right one. All right. So the only way to tell which one is close to the right one is to have a level, because we could say this is why I tell you to trade levels. I could say, oh, short right here. Yeah, we shorted it because we got the signal, but you weren't at no level. I could say, oh, short. We didn't really have anything here. These were indecision. I could say short right here. Why? Why would I short there? There's no level for me to short unless I'm looking at maybe a top here. I don't know what I have here, but I need a level to short something. So. Now, when I get here, I do have a level, all right? And then when I'm here, I do have a level. That's why you need that level to trade off of. You can't trade thin air. All right, so I guess we kick this one into the dirt. Let's go back to the daily. You could see you could still trade the daily and stay on that, or you could go back to the normal candle, watch for that bearish and golfing, trade that bearish and golfing. The four hour each the four hour candle for Heikinashi is done. You you're done. I mean, you could still take an entry here because you're still above that daily bear. I mean, that daily um bullish and bearish and golfing candle that we saw on the regular candles. So this is still a good opportunity. Now the thing also is we're breaking negative eighty. Good strong sign for us. We want to stay below negative eighty. We don't want to see that thing come down and then come back up like that. We don't want to see this. All right. So we want to see that stay down like this a little bit. All right. Because that'll be give, that'll be a move. If you just look at how much that move is. When that thing broke. It was right here. Actually, I use this. So when it broke the bottom negative 80 right there, this was right here, this candle. And it stayed down that deep from this candle all the way down and we were still short to this point and then the market now you're seeing the market it comes above now the candlesticks did change over here before you got your break above negative 80 but see that's what we want to see the same thing here we want to stay in that um oversold level that's what a lot of people look at that as an oversold level i look at that as strength bear strength in the market when you break that negative 80 you're losing strength in the market when you come back above negative 80 and that's where i like to try to catch my long trade when it break back above that negative 80 level all right but now i don't even need to look at that i can just confirm what i'm seeing here because when we go back and look at this all of our breaks are pretty much with these candles pretty much a lot of these are going to be with the candles see that's a self signal there and you got it on time here so you really can almost almost don't need to even look at Williams percent R. Okay. Do we need 
Williams, Prisenar, do we need Heikinashi candles to line up with tops, bottoms? What do you mean? I don't know what you mean, line up with. But it, line up with tops and bottoms, I'm not sure what you mean. If you, I just talk about a level. We need them to go to those levels. And that's why you need to be marking your levels on your chart. You need to be aware of levels on your chart. If you don't know how to find levels, you need to learn how to find levels by going through some of the stuff that I've already shown you. All right. There's so many other levels to, that you can use. Also, you can use the same thing we're talking about. You can use moving averages. You can use pivot points. You can use Fibonacci retracement and all that other stuff. As long as it's a level, a support level, support and resistance level. All right. I overdid this one, right? Didn't I say that like 10 minutes ago? Let's go to Euro pound. Euro pound daily time frame first. So I'm looking to see if the market's going to hold at our, our fractal level. It looks like it's trying to break through. All right. So we got a good level here at 89.872. All right. And this is the level we're looking for a long trade because the market's trending to the upside. We're looking at the correction stopping here. Now, we could also do a couple other things. Let me figure this out here. So the one to one ratio. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to look at something real quick. I want to see about where we're going to be. So I'm going to. Um, my trend based fib extensions. This is Ichimoku observation theory. This is the advanced Ichimoku right here. And I already have it on my charts already. And we didn't get that level. OK. So we didn't get so the, actually the if you don't know much about Ichimoku and you're trying to learn the theories, one of the theories is the observation theory and the observation theories are, are is for targets. Basically, I already have targets set up with these Fibonacci extension levels. All you have to do is put these levels in on your Fibonacci extension to 0.927, 1.0, 1.221 and 1.611. That's going to give you your levels. All right. So your E level, your V level, your N level, your NT level. This N level is very important. That's a measured move in the market that everyone knows about. That's why it's 1.0, a measured move, which means A, B equals C, D. This D didn't get to that point, but a lot of times you see it get there. So that's also a way that you figure out like, like if I'm looking at the market and I know that we're up here, if this extended up here, I know that I can prepare for the market to correct itself because it's made a one to one move, a measured move. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to happen, but that's when I start looking for it. Right. You start looking for it. So you start looking at the candles and I don't always trade corrections, but depending. It's another way for you to look at how, how to get into the market. So we need to see if this is going to hold. Let's go to the four hour real quick, see what it's doing. It's still very strong to the downside. Now, you could see we're getting smaller candles. So what I'm going to look for is on this four hour, if we get a buy signal, I'm going to take it. Now, my problem is this. On the daily time frame, this really closed below this fractal, but it wasn't a point fractal, but it's still closed below it. So that's a lot of times going to signify directional change. Um, but I want to see if our level that we developed, that we made holds. So if this level is going to hold, we'll see it within the price action and it'll show itself first on the four hour. All right. With one of these types of candles. So if we took this whole leg right here and moved it right here now, we would first get this candle. And I would say this is could be a um, 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 a weak buy entry right there. It's a little bit, it's not quite indecision like these are, are like that. Cause this wick is a little big. This one's not that big. So you could say this would be a weak buy. And if you had that weak buy signal here, you could take that trade. Now on this case, since we're below our zone, I would definitely start. I, here's how I would trade this. Once I get the signal, I would definitely put my stop loss a little bit lower than these wicks if I had an entry because the next candle is going to open right here. So if the next candle opens there and closes, supposedly, let's say it closes here just because it's a little candle like that or something. Your stop loss will be here. Your candle open in the middle, close there, and you have that weak buy signal or whatever. 
we want to see the market cross this level. Where the problem is going to be is on this four hour time frame. If we're not getting through this level right here, and I made it a little zone at eight, nine, seven, nine, eight, then we're probably going to see the market continue to the downside. All right. So we're still looking to see if we're going to get a, a, a turnaround here because we're looking to trade this level. So nothing happened for us since yesterday. It's still yesterday. We ended up here and then we had this candle develop. What we're looking for hasn't developed right now. Um, and if it doesn't develop, more than likely the market's heading to this level. More than likely. So I'll pay attention here. I don't have to take this breakout here and see we're below negative 80. See how we want to see that? We want to see that. Now we're below negative 80. Everyone calls this again. I told you oversold. I mean, overbought, oversold here. But people don't understand that's also strong momentum to the downside. This is the start of the momentum when you break negative 20. This is strong momentum when you break negative 80 and you stay below there. This is the strong bullish momentum when you, well, the start of bullish momentum when you break negative 80 to the upside. And when you close above negative 20, that's strong bullish momentum. And you see what happens. All right. So what I'm looking for to see if this market's going to hold, if this closes below, let's go to our four hour. You could at this point, you could even go to your one hour, but we'll stay with the four hour and we'll look for our fractal bounce trade and we'll catch the downside move. All right. And so we'll be good for the downside move. But let's stick with um, our analysis and until the market tells us otherwise. All right. So nothing there really yet. Um, we want to go and I mark all my tr setups that are like I mark every trade that I'm looking at green. All these other ones, there's nothing for me to really talk about. So this one's not ready yet either. But we're getting there. Actually, I moved this up to this point because here's where we were. We're getting to this point when we get to 181, 841. That's when we're going to be looking to short this thing. So nothing changed since what I talked about yesterday, except this candle. We moved a little bit higher. We're reaching this level. We're looking to see the market get to this point. Let's see if we have any divergences in the market. I don't care about divergence a lot until you get to a true support level, which would be this major level down here at 176,576. Then I would really start thinking about I'm never trading divergence. I just add that in as an enhancer to my trade. And I would say, well, I got a support level with divergence at that level, bullish divergence at that level. And I'm starting to see indecision candles at that level. And now I got a weak buy signal at that level. I'm in the market. All right. So that's the thought process to get into the trade. All right. You're not saying, oh, I got um, divergence. I'm getting into the trade. Negative. You don't trade the divergence only. The divergence isn't enough because divergence can last from this point all the way down to this point. All right. Divergence can last for a long time. So trade the market and these ha these candles will take away some of the confusion for you. Um, so we're looking at for a short at 181, 841. And we're going to see if we can get that. All right. So. We don't have anything there yet. Let's go to the next. Now, this one is in our zone. So we, we have a zone where we're ready for the trade to happen. Um, I'm not going to move the zone higher. I moved the zone mixed from here with this candle right here. I use these two candles. I use this wick and I use this body. This body's too deep. Um, this is the start of the zone because of the fractal. Then we have here, we moved up into the zone. Now we want to get our trade. All right. I believe this is ready. Oh, no, it's not. So what we do, we hit the daily time frame. Daily time frame hits the level. We go to the four hour. The four hour candle right now is indecision. So we could stay on four hour in this pounce with Frank for the rest of the time now, because next thing we're going to look for. There's only two more things you're going to look for now. Two different candles. Actually, you're going to look for a weak sell or a strong sell. And that's it. You've got basic. This one is indecision because the body's too too thin. All right. So you're going to look. It doesn't matter how big this wick is. This body is way too thin. So you're going to just now look if this closes 
when it closes in another basically half hour, you're going to say, I'm looking for the next calendar to close at nine o'clock to be a bear. I mean, a, a strong sale or a weak sale at nine o'clock tonight. If you don't get it, then you're going to probably have to look for the next one at one o'clock. If you don't get it, you're going to have to go to the next five o'clock. If you don't get it, it's going to be the next. So we have to wait some time, but see the next thing. That's what we're going to be looking for. Everything's setting up just like we want. So we can stay on the four hour on the pound Swiss Frank. And I'm looking at this one tightly because I'm thinking this is a better one for me to get in also. Um, when you go back to this daily here, there is room for it to still push higher, which is unnerving. But that's a big zone. I usually don't like to draw zones that thick, but that's what I, I had. So it's starting to show the signs. And if it shows those signs, I probably don't want to allow the stop loss to be that deep, especially with the pounce was Frank going to be big, big profit getting knocked off the table. Pounce was Frank two hour, uh, I mean, four hour time frame with traditional candles. Let's look at it. No, it's not giving no entry on the four hour. Mm, yeah, I guess I would have. That would have been. Yeah, because we would have been looking at this. But you know what? You might get a little correction, then another move a little higher. You get stopped out, then it moves back down on you. So you're not really missing anything. OK. So, but yeah, you do have an entry there and it could just continue to the downside from there, but we'll see it also. when Okay. So let's mark where the true, uh, let's mark this level. Let's see what the differences are right now. And then let's mark where the actual market is. This was the rejection candle. And then we want to go to the regular, I mean, the Heiken Ash candles. So we had an entry here uh, and that was four hour also. Yeah, we have an entry there. And the actual market is right here and we're showing the actual market here. OK. So not super big, but a little bit. So the actual market compared is going to be not much. See, that's not much. Five, six pips right there. So you can be patient here. Watch that four hour and you'll get a good trade. OK. I'm going to keep this on four hour for this pair because there's no really need to go back to daily. Um, there's no need to go back to daily. But remember, we could still push higher because the top of the zone is there. The market could get to the top of the zone now. I don't want to have my stop loss that deep. How far away from that are we at this point? Actually, we're only 60 pips away. Have to be a little bit higher than that, though. So about 65 pips away. Depending on what the next candles do, we'll see. I'd feel real comfortable if it was right there. But where, where the zone's so big, that's why it's going to be that big of a uh, stop loss if I use the zone. So you can start out, see where our entry goes, then use the top of these candles at least. That'll be your minimum level if we get an entry within before this break of this level. So if we get our short entry, stop loss above here, your short entry based on your candles, and you'll see the market drop and you'll make a million dollars on this trade. Guaranteed. It's psych, I ain't guaranteeing no money, but I hope it gives you some money, some good profit, but let's see what happens. So let's go to the next one. Let me put these on daily. Our next opportunity is this pound New Zealand dollar. This one is setting up good, I believe. I believe we might be missing this one. Our zone is right here. You can see our zone. We broke a little bit, pulled back into it. Now look, we're starting to see a, a change, four hour. 
So this candle is an indecision. It's going to have to be the next candle. So you see this, right? This is what you're going to. Let's say we just took this right here. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm trying to tell you. Let's say we just took this right here. Because this candle is this candle. And then we take this candle and move it over here at nine o'clock tonight. That's your entry right there. That would be how you enter the market. See how that is? Because you would have a candle that's a strong sell candle. And if you got it right here after this candle, you would enter the market. It looks like a candle. Dude. Does that look like a good candle? I don't know. <laughs> it looks terrible. But anyway, yeah, that's what you would be looking for now. We're staying on the four hour time frame with the pound New Zealand also. There's really no need to go back to the daily. The daily is going to get us in if we're going to be back short late. You can see the direction of the trend overall. All right. So we're following the strength of the trend with these trades, really. So let's go to the next. What's that pound New Zealand dollar there? And this is what we do every Sunday, but we do it longer than this. Because when on Sunday we go through all of these, every single one on this list right here. But today we wanted to go over what we see happening right now, which is pound USD daily time frame. Why did I mark this one? Oh, we broke the level. This probably is going back up to this zone. I'm not, I don't even want to talk about this one. I don't think we're getting a short here, but don't give up on it yet. Let's go to four hour. Yeah, see, four hour already gave it to us. But I want to see the daily break through this level because this is the zone that we broke already. So, and we started to break bull fractals. So we're probably heading up to this level. So we're probably, if we see anything, it's probably just going to be a, a short correction here. It's not going to be a move that we want to trade and hoping that we get deep profit. It could be just a short correction because I believe um, pound US dollar is heading up to this level here, this zone that we have drawn here. You can see this zone is real. Now, the last time we hit the zone, so we're almost like, it's almost basically our supply and demand zones, but we're trading it. We're not trading supply and demand zones. We're trading these fractal zones. All right. Now, if I was looking at supply and demand, I would be looking at this level. A good, a good level to look at supply and demand would be this one right here. And I'm going to draw the whole thing. I'm going to draw the whole zone. So it would be pretty much like this. Based on what we're looking at. And see, we're more trendy for the bounces off of the fractals, but this could be a, a nice bounce off of this level. And if not, maybe we get into this zone again. You could see where there was some very strong selling right there, super strong. So you get back in that area, have all these orders been absorbed? Who knows? So that's where you get another opportunity. All right, I'm gonna be moving on because we don't have anything on this one yet. So I don't know how come I marked it on my chart. I'll look at USD CAD. Do you see something? Last one I'm looking at right now is the New Zealand dollar. This is one that I really want to look at also. New Zealand dollar, US dollar. I think we already missed this trade. Um, I was looking at it earlier and I wasn't here to be able to um, send it out to you guys. Four hour time frame. Watch what's happening. We got our entry at the end of this candle close. We should be this candle closes at five entry here. Stop loss above this level. All right. Because what we're trading now, guys. So this is an active entry. And at this point, it's a strong sale. What you're trading is this. See how the market's having a, a hard time getting through this level. So we marked it because the market dropped and then went back. Now we could be breaking. If we break, it's going to continue this trend to the upside here. But we're looking at it flattening out here because Let's see. Do we have divergence at this point also? I like to use ultimate oscillator for divergence. Whoops. 
I believe it's one of the best threefold. There is no divergence. Actually, I'm sorry. Yes, there is. So look at this level. That would be this level. Look at this level. They're even, right? They're not even here. That's not, that's bearish divergence. You've got some bearish divergence in that market. So now here's how I talk about divergence. I've got bearish, uh, bearish divergence at a level. All right. A resistance level. We're still above negative eight, uh, 20 on the daily. When I go to the four hour, Williams percent R gave us an entry already. All right. And that's your short right there. Candle close entry there. Let's see where the true market is. Let's mark this. See the differences. So this is your opportunity to get in this short. Um, now, see, you would have been able to still get in this. This looks like it's doing a we're a little bit off. Not much, maybe two pips or so. But this candle is where you would have entered the market normally. See that bearish and golfing? Basically, that's a big outside candle. That's a strong signal for a downtrend. So we're getting good signals and we're at a good level. You can see where the level is bouncing, bounced on the bottom, didn't quite get to the top. I made a smaller zone here. That's why I had it marked. And then we broke that zone a little bit, came up to the top of the zone. We should see it drop. All right. And you're going to go back to the four hour on the, whoops, sorry, on the Hikanashi. You're going to have a stop loss above this level. You're going to have an entry at this point. And more than likely, you'll be a market in order because the market may be below you a little bit. All right. So that's a good opportunity, that New Zealand dollar, U.S. dollar. Any questions on that? Any questions? Okay, and someone wanted me to look at one other. I'm gonna look at those other ones you asked me to. I'm gonna look at them real quick. If I don't see anything, I'm gonna move real fast. Someone asked me, hi Carl, why ignore those two resistance points? Which ones? Which two points? Are you talking about these two points? Let me know which ones you're talking about because I don't know what points you're asking me about ignoring. If it's these two, I'm not ignoring them. I, I made this level, that is this true level, but then there is also a zone. So I made another level here. The market broke that point. You're talking about, I'm talking about pound USD. Which levels are you asking me? Because like between here, there's nothing major. I mean, the only point that I could look at is this right here. That point right there. That's where you are. And then the overall market is here. You could see where the better level is based off of this bounce. I mean, we had some good bounces here also. So a level that I didn't mark, I, I, I looked at this level. And this is a valid level. So if you did look at that level, you would have taken that trade. Okay, so good eye. I didn't, I didn't mark it. I went, my eyes were not as good as yours. So good eye for that. No, it's it's not advisable to go to like the one hour time frame quicker just to get a better entry. It's advisable to go from the daily to the four hour 
if you're trading a four hour chart, it's advisable to go from the four hour to the one hour. But don't go from the daily to the one hour. OK, because I already so I explained that to you that you're going to get probably whipsawed out of the trade. Too much of a difference there. You got a good eye with that. Um, that's a nice level. Trade I could have been in already, right? That's why I say you got to draw these levels on your charts and see them. Let me see any other questions. Mm -mm. Okay, no other questions. I'm going to move to someone asked me to look at USD CAD, I believe it was. I see no reason for me to really focus on USD CAD. Let me mark this level down here real quick, see something. So I don't see a real reason to focus on it. Um, I mean, because it's kind of late really should have had the levels drawn below it to get into the trade here. All right. Because you could see the support levels and this is where you miss trades. If you don't draw these levels, All right? So you have to have levels. Don't put a ton of levels on your chart, space them out where the mark, give the market room to move because the market goes to and fro. I see people put a level. They'll be like this. There's a level here. There's a level here and there's another level here. There's a level here. How are you trading all that? I mean, which one are you going to pay attention to? The market's going to move through some of those little levels. Find the one that's strongest where the market reacted most. And the strongest reactions were here, here. You have a nice points here, but those points touch the bottom here. And then you, when you go back to the left of this, you have this. So this was all support. Now it was resistance back here. So it makes this one level right here super strong as opposed to this and any other thing that I drew on the chart. OK, so you don't need that kind of levels. You need levels that you can trade between. And you can mark them on your chart and find them. All right. And they're easy. And especially when the market's sideways like this, you really catch these levels and you catch these trades. Then maybe back up to this point. All right. Sometimes we don't get back to that point. That's why I always look at at these tops. All right. So I'm always paying attention to these levels and you can see these levels. If you pay attention to them, you can see that sometimes there's some support or resistance that you are not really aware of. So always mark a top and then look, look across to see if it's relevant. So when the market gets here, is it going to matter again? Because it mattered there. So you want to find that out. So you got a little bit of space to go to before you really want to start paying good attention to this. You don't want to trade right here yet. So you want to see the next level and this would be the next level I'm paying attention to. And then when the market gets there, maybe I short at that point when I get a signal like this. Or maybe the market breaks right through and we wait to this level. All right. So let me go to the next. What does somebody else want me to look at something else? Because I'm done with everything I wanted to look at. Somebody else asked me to look at something else. New Zealand dollar USD, we did, right? Aikanashi's not on MT4. It is on MT4, but they got it looks terrible. You got to go somewhere and download it, and you can put it in. And this is um, Trading View, free charts. But you'll get um, advertisements if you don't become a pro member or whatever it is. Euro Aussie. Let me see if there's a reason to look at Euro Aussie. We should be able to tell as soon as we go to the chart. I don't see no reason to look at Euro Aussie. Okay, I see no reason to look at it. Let me tell you why. So first of all, I could see some levels that I would pay attention to. I have one level drawn here, but I'm going to put another level where the market seemed to ease up a little bit. So we're there. And then I'm going to put another level where the market seemed to be kind of flattening out into so right here, other than that, 
you're be, you could automatically come to this chart, see that you're between this these points, and there's no reason to trade this. Um, you should already be in a trade or waiting for the trade. All right. There's only two things you need to be doing: being in a trade or waiting for the trade. And to me, um, the price action is okay, and it's slowly moving towards this direction. I wouldn't jump in here now, because I always tell you guys you need to be. You need if you're gonna jump in the markets, you need to have a level that's gonna protect you. What's the closest level to protect you? Um, this top here, this candle, no, negative. The market can blow right through that candle, blow right through this candle, blow right through this candle, but probably find hard time blowing through this level. That's where you need to be. That's why you need to trade up at that point or trade down here because it had a hard time blowing through that level a bunch of times right here. So therefore, that's where you want to trade long because you can use these as your stop losses. You could put it below those levels right there. And you can see the market likes to attack these same points. Look at these points. That market came all the way back to that point, all the way to that point, knows exactly where to go. That's why I tell you, don't put your stop loss smack dab on a point. Be a little bit below it, all right, or above it, depending on where you're going. I see no reason to really talk about Eurozzi. I'll talk about it when it gets to 161.903. All right. So um, I don't have anything to tell you about it. And if we do Ichimoku on here, watch this. It's going to be sloppier. Going to be more, more messy. See, it's flat. Nothing. Very flat. Which way is your crossover? Bullish. The market's below the crossover. Bearish. Got a bearish cloud. Now, there is one thing you could look at. If we stay with Ichimoku, we could look at the trade to this point. Because when I look at Ichimoku, I'm not trading this yet. Not for a while. But when I get, so when they stay tight and then drop like that, you could look for that drop here. And that's where you short that market. All right. But at this point, you don't do anything in this market. Okay, I believe I am done. Somebody wants me to look at Ethereum USD. I did that yesterday. And I didn't think there was much, I don't believe. I'll look at that and I'll be done. Let's go daily to figure this out. Let's take Ichimoku off the table. Um. So we were talking about this level, the market moving to. So somebody was telling me they were in a trade at this point. Yeah, they got into the trade. I told them stick with their trade. Let's see what where we are. Let's go to the normal candles for a minute. So the normal candles mark is right here. And let's go back. Aikanashi says the market is right there. A little bit of a difference. Okay, so I think you're going to be looking for a short at this point. I don't see Ethereum getting through this level right away. Because what I do, guys, I pay attention to the market. I let the market tell me because, first of all, the market said hit here, hit here. Why do you think different there? So look for the short here. All we're going to do now is just go to the four hour and look for that opportunity. So hold on one second. Let's go to the four hour. We're late. I told you guys yesterday, look at this level. And now we're late. We could have been short in this. But probably going to see a little retrace back up again based off of you see some weakness here. So you might see it attack this level again, 247. All right. So that's it. That's my thoughts on the market today. I have some other things I'm going to be looking at doing. So hold on one second. Let me see. We'll end the session, but I'm going to be sending out the, I would let you guys know that we have a big session tomorrow with um, um, a former 
institutional trader, Mr. Paul Langham, he traded millions of dollars for big banks in the UK, Lloyds of London, some of the big banks that you know. So he'll be able to tell you his philosophy on the market and how he trades the market. So you don't want to miss that tomorrow, one o'clock. Um, I think you're going to learn a lot from him. OK, so tune in for that tomorrow. You could join that. You can join that session by going to the main website, FX at one and go to events and register. It's a free event. Anybody could come. There's only 100 seats available, but it's probably going to be sold out. So if you don't get in there before the other first 100, you miss out. You'll have to wait um, and you'll see those on Fridays. All right. But you're going to see Mr. Paul Langham tomorrow. Very good. All right. So thank you very much, guys. I appreciate y'all. Hope you enjoyed this session. Have a great one. God bless. So long. Bye.